Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to present another presentation, which can be considered a continuation for the previous third presentation. The third presentation was about abstract importance of abstract, how to write it, how to follow the writing scientifically and make it impressive. Today we are going to uh, talk about another topic, which it is a continuation for the previous one, which it is graphical abstract. Means that you have abstract and you explain that abstract in a graphical way. So let us see what is the graphical abstract. In many journals, let us have an example. When you search for a journal, you can find something like that. Let's have a look here. This is a paper published in Elsevier, Journal of Physics and Chemistry of Solid. This is the topic or title of the paper, research paper. It has hotline highlighted. This is very important. Maybe we explain it in the next presentation. Abstract, we explained it in the previous presentation and it has a graphical abstract. This is the enlarged uh, image of the graphical abstract. If we look at that graphical abstract without knowing about chemistry and physics, myself, my field is not chemistry. But when I look at the graphical abstract, in the first glance, immediate glance without reading the paper, without any knowledge about authors, about paper, about journal. Once I look at the graphical abstract, I can sum up some conclusion. I can understand that the authors use silicon carbide depos deposition with iron. Here. And they have some mixture. Mixture is carbon, silicon, silicon oxide powder inside a closet box. So I mean, it is like chamber or furnace or anything. This is argon. Argon usually is a, an inert gas. So it seems they center it at this temperature, 1500 the duration time for two hours, they got this, let's say, structure. From the color, we can conclude that the head of the structure will be iron and the core will be silicon carbide. After etching, etching means that uh, we, after production, after sintering of any product, we use about 80% of the sintering temperature. For example, instead of 1,500, we used uh, another temperature, 1,300 Celsius degree. In the etching, this iron contamination will be uh, evaporated or missed. So we get this structure of silicon carbide uh, dendritic. In more explanation here, the silicon carbide nanowire, this is abbreviation of nanowires. And uh, we have dendritic, means like uh, uh, dendritic of human brain, inside human brain. And this graph is three-dimensional represent, uh, representation of refraction loss, frequency, thickness. So without knowledge about this author, about this topic, just looking at the 
graphical abstract, in the first glance, I could get the most important core finding of the paper. What is the paper about? If the topic of that paper is, is interested for me or related to my research topic, then I will click on the uh, paper itself, read the abstract. Now, when we read abstract, if the graphical abstract is successful, we should find the same information here. So the information here is about dendritic nanomaterial exhibits a unique structure and excellent performance. This is just uh, as we explained it in the first previous uh, presentation. It is just a uh, background, background of the research. Silicon carbide nanowire with dendritic structure were synthesized for the first time by using facile method that combine electrolysis, plating, iron with carbon thermal reduction. So this is the core of the paper. They produced SIC nanowire with dendritic structure by first time. If uh, this is, means a novel, so novelty of the research using facile method, meaning uh, up to date or cutting edge method to combine two different methods. Then here is the explanation. The dendritic silicon carbide show an improved microwave absorption performance compared with their linear counterparts. So we can find that in this graphical abstract. After that, talk about maximum reflection loss, this value, and these values we can find here. After that, the interfacial polarization and multiple DBA dielectric polarization relaxation process induced by the dendritic structure of these nanowires play important roles in the microwave absorbing procedure. So this is a kind of conclusion. And after that, the result highlighted the potential of fabricated dendritic silicon carbide nanowires as efficient electromagnetic wave absorption material. This is a recommendation for the future research. So in the graphical abstract, we can conclude many things. First of all, the graphical abstract should not be exactly the copy of paste of the abstract text. Should not be exactly copy and paste. Second, the graphical abstract should be written in attractive graphic color representation text. And very simple, it should be very simple. We take another example in this paper. We have uh, this title is about silicon carbide nanomaterial by microwave heating. Effect of types of carbon nanotube. So they use a different type of carbon nanotube in the production of silicon carbide nanomaterial. This highlight is very important. We will explain in another presentation. Here is abstract, we explained in the previous one. So now we focus on the graphical abstract. When we look at the graphical abstract, we understand the author is mixed carbon nanotube with silicon oxide, but they have two ways. In the first way, they use the multi-wall carbon nanotube. The people who work in the chemistry, they understand what does that mean. Another way they use it, single wall carbon nanotube. So they have carbon nanotube, but they use it two different types, multi-wall and single wall. When they use it, multi-wall with a silicon oxide, 
the production became uh, SIO, SIO gas, which is evaporated and carbon, uh, multi-wall carbon nanotube converted to silicon carbide nanotube. This is green color here. And this is TEM image. But when they use a single wall carbon nanotube with silicon oxide, then uh, they found nucleation. Nucleation means uh, uh, starting to create a nuclei new for the new material and growth of single carbon nanotube nanowire. So we got nanotube silicon carbide here. Here we got silicon carbide nanowire, totally different structure. So again, pre, uh, compare, uh, similarly to the previous example, when we read the text abstract, when we read the text abstract, some information or main finding here in the graphical abstract, we should find here. Of course, at the beginning of abstract, it is an introduction of the paper. After that, uh, maybe about methodology. And after that, report some methodology. They use a single carbon nanotube and multi-wall carbon nanotube. And different, when they use different type of carbon nanotube, they get different structure of silicon carbide, either nanotube or nanowire. And after that, maybe they highlight some, a highlight very important finding. Finally, they have conclusion and maybe recommendation for future research. So the graphical abstract, we can sum up here. If you want to present a graphical abstract, we have some points we will explain shortly. First of all, why graphical abstract is important? Because in the current situation, the number of journals and uh, papers are in increasing exponentially. And the researcher, when search for a research paper, it takes too much time. It is time consuming and effort consuming for a researcher to read the whole paper. In the previous presentation, we explained that abstract main goal is to reduce time and effort to read only text. But uh, nowadays, because of too many papers publishing, even reading text is somehow time consuming. So if they have a graphical abstract, like we showed just now, just a first glance and looking at it, give uh, principal information. When the researcher read that, or look at the graphical abstract, read the parts inside graphical abstract, they will understand either this paper related to their research interest or no. If they are interested and uh, found that it is related to their research, then they read the text abstract. For that reason, many journals now, they make it compulsory, not optional, compulsory. When you submit your paper, you should submit a graphical abstract. And uh, now we explain what are the features of graphical abstract? Abstract. First of all, the graphical abstract, what we explain it, should not be only copy paste of the abstract. And you'll see we define it, allow readers to quickly, to quickly gain an understanding of the main take home message of the paper. This is clear and is intended to encourage browsing. The graphical abstract should be attractive, encourage readers to click, browse the main paper. 
promote interdisciplinary scholarship and help readers identify more quickly which papers are most relevant to their research interests. As we explained, the graphical abstract should be straightforward and easy going for the flexible for the researchers that they can go ahead and understand easily. So now uh, let us consider the main point. First of all, in the graphical abstract, you should sum up the main outcome and idea of your research. Like we present two examples in this presentation video. Another point, know your target audience. You write that one for who? You want everybody understand or you want only researchers in your field understand. So that is different. If you want to let everybody understand, you should make it very simple and uh, explain more detail. If you want only understandable by researchers in your field, in that case, researchers in your field, they have basic knowledge. So you just uh, straightforward, go ahead to the main finding in your abstract and take tips. This is very important. Look at the previous published graphical abstract. Uh, find the pros and cons, advantage and disadvantage of the previous published graphical abstract. Avoid the mistake and find uh, the previous graphical abstract that have mistake, you should try to avoid them. And uh, you should include the main element of your research as much as possible in your graphical abstract. After that, you have to follow guideline of the journal. Each journal has guideline. For example, 600 pixels should be used, color or gray scale. And uh, you should read the guideline of the journal very clearly. And after that, you make uh, use effective color imagery and uh, graphical attractiveness should attract the reader to read. And uh, use a appropriate platform like a software. Which software do you use? Which software is make it uh, clear? After that, keep the design crisp and easy to understand. When the people look at it, they could understand it easily, easier than the abstract text. And finally, be mindful of the image quality. You should make sure that when you enlarge image, like here, for example, let us look at the previous example. When we click of the, over the image, the quality of image will be very good and everyone can understand it. Uh, no blur, no text missing, and uh, the color are distinguished clearly. For example, here, this uh, carbon nanotube is black. This one is green. So the green is referred to carbon nanotube and the other one related to the multi-wall carbon nanotube. The green, sorry, is referred to silicon carbon nanotube, silicon carbide nanotube. So it should be very clear. Thank you very much for your listening and uh, uh, your feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you very much.